Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a very special episode of Easy Buckets. How y'all doing today? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Toronto Raptors and what their off-season plans might look like. You know, recently, the Raptors just got eliminated in the second round of the playoffs in game seven against the Boston Celtics. And oh boy, that series was just an amazing experience. If you guys know me, I am a big Raptor fan. I'm from Toronto, so of course I'll be cheering for the Raptors. And watching Game 7 was just like an epic showdown for me and like a roller coaster ride. The game going back and forth was just, it was insane, and I was just hoping for the best that the Raptors would win and go to the conference finals. But of course, after a well fought series and a well fought game, the Raptors ended up losing to the Celtics. The Celtics, you know what? Shout out to the Celtic fans. The Celtics are absolutely amazing. A little funny story for you guys, literally in the morning of game 7, I went out, you know what, I was just feeling a little ballsy, a little, you know what, a little, I just, I just wanted to make a big purchase. So I went to the local shopping mall to buy like a Raptor gear to make me just excited for game 7, and to give some good luck to the Raptors, if you know what I'm talking about. And of course, you guys know what I had to buy, I bought this, boom! <laughs> I ended up going out and I found myself a Kyle Lowry jersey. There was literally one left in the store. I went to the worker there. I was like, how much for this? They told me the price. I'm like, I got to get it. I got to get it for game seven. Game seven. And Kyle Lowry's number seven. I just had to get this jersey. You know, it was great vibes buying the jersey, but you know what, losing in game seven, I, it is a funny story, because you know, I bought the jersey in the morning, hoping for a W, but they ended up losing, so it was kind of funny to me, but definitely a good memory and something I'll have for the rest of my life. But yeah guys, basically what I'm trying to say is that the Raptors, they're still going to be a great team next season and in the upcoming future. And in this video, I want to talk about potential scenarios that the Raptors should do, in my opinion, and I believe that will keep them competitive and still be a top two seed in the Eastern Conference. So if you're a big Raptor fan, this video is perfect for you. But yeah guys, if you're new to the channel and love basketball, welcome to Easy Buckets. My name is Soom and I make basketball videos every single day. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications to not miss any of my upcoming videos. If you watched the video and love it, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. It will really help out the channel. You know what guys, I just wanna give a quick thank you to everybody that's been supporting me, all the viewers, all the likes, all the comments. You guys are absolutely the best. I love you guys. But without wasting any more time, Let's go straight into the future for the Toronto Raptors in this upcoming offseason. The Toronto Raptors this season were absolutely amazing and they definitely proved everybody wrong. After losing Kawhi Leonard last offseason, everybody was saying that basically the Raptors will not even be making the playoffs or barely just make it. A lot of analysts said that in projections, the Raptors would either be a 7th to 8th seed, but no more than the 7th or 8th spot. But this year, the Raptors proved everybody wrong and ended up with the record of 53 and 19, being second in the Eastern Conference and also second in the entire NBA in record behind the Milwaukee Bucks. Fun fact to know, without Kawhi Leonard, they had a better regular season record and there are just so many factors to the Toronto Raptors. I can go on all day about how good the Raptors are and talk about the many strengths that they have, but to sum it all down, it's basically this. They're coached really well and they play hard and they have a lot of heart. The Raptors are just one of the better teams in the NBA and they're proving that right now. And even though they lost to the Boston Celtics in Game 7, I'm pretty sure if they beat the Boston Celtics in Game 7, they will probably be going back to the NBA Finals. That's just my opinion. But the Raptors this offseason, they're going to have to make some moves in order to keep them consistent and to keep them competitive. And in this video, you guys are going to learn everything that I believe is the best move for the Raptors. In this upcoming offseason, they could lose Fred Van Vliet, Serge Ibaka, Marc Gasol, Chris Boucher, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, and these players can basically sign wherever they want. On their roster, they basically only have Kyle Lowry, Norman Powell, Pascal Siakam, and OG Ananobi locked in for next season. So this is my priority list for the Raptors. The first thing that I believe the Raptors have to do is give OG Ananobi a contract extension. Not re-sign him because he still has one more year in his deal. He's still in his rookie deal. So re-signing OG to a contract extension before he becomes unrestricted next year is going to be a cheap and fast thing and quick thing to do. 
Priority number two is bringing back Serge Ibaka. This year, Serge Ibaka was amazing and was definitely one of the better six mans in the NBA. He had a career high of 15.4 points per game, shooting 39% behind the three-point line and also a total of 51% at the field goal percentage. Ibaka was a great spark off the bench both offensively and defensively and I believe in this culture, Ibaka just fits perfectly. He was getting paid $23 million this year and I believe if Ibaka can get maybe a $15 million to $20 million deal, he'll definitely resign with the Raptors and stay with them. So hopefully Serge Ibaka can resign and potentially be their new starting center. Another priority is a must do and that's find a way to sign Fred Van Vliet, resign him to a contract that he will accept. Fred Van Vliet was only getting paid $9 million this year and from his play of 17.6 points per game this season over 7 assists, Fred is going to definitely ask for more. There was multiple rumors surrounding Fred signing with the New York Knicks or a team that could give him a max contract because I believe Fred Van Vliet could get that possibility and a contract like that. I don't believe the Raptors can give Fred a max contract, maybe a 20 to 25 million dollar deal and Fred will be satisfied with that still competing for a championship with Pascal Siakam as his dual partner. But it's going to be tough in Fred's scenario, I don't know what Fred wants to do. If I were to predict, I do want Fred and think he will resign with the Raptors. He's had some amazing games this playoffs, a 30 point 11 assist game against the Brooklyn Nets, a 20.6 assist game in game 7 against the Boston Celtics. Fred's value is probably one of the higher values in this free agency class and big contracts will be thrown his way and it all depends on Fred on what he wants to do, whether stay in Toronto, get paid a good contract, not an amazing one, a good contract, compete for a championship again or maybe go to a team giving him a max contract maybe like the New York Knicks but if I were the Raptors I will try to do whatever I can to re-sign Fred Van Vliet he is a must own player definitely one of the better point guards in the NBA and of course small factors of re-signing Rondé Hollis Jefferson who has been good this season defensively off the bench as a power forward and sometimes a playmaker Rondé definitely has a lot to prove in the NBA and there is much growth when it comes to his ability so re-signing Rondé is definitely something easy the Raptors might be looking into and also re-signing Chris Boucher Boucher is definitely a young center and this year I believe if the Raptors don't re-sign Marcus Gasol which is something I don't think they should do re-signing Boucher to a cheaper deal could be a good idea but to quickly talk about Marcus Gasol, he was getting paid $25 million this year and to be honest for his price he was awful. He averaged a career low of 7.5 points per game and that is literally not something a $25 million player should be doing. If the Raptors want to sign Marcus Gasol again, I'm not saying don't do it, I'm just saying give him not a lot of money, maybe a veterans minimum but let's see if other teams in the NBA offer Marcus Gasol that. Marcus Gasol is definitely not a priority in my video. So just to conclude this little segment on free agents is give OG a contract extension, re-sign Serge Ibaka, re-sign Fred Van Vliet, Chris Boucher, and Rondé Hollis Jefferson. I believe this is a must do for the Raptors this offseason. But there are also some other free agents I believe the Toronto Raptors could target if they're unable to get Fred and Serge Ibaka. The first free agent is the Raptors targeting Brandon Ingram, who'll be a restricted free agent in this upcoming offseason. Brandon Ingram just won most improved player with his points and averages of 23 points per game, shooting 39% from the 3 point line and a total of 85% at the free throw line, Brandon Ingram was amazing this season. When talking about the Raptors starting lineup, their biggest and weakest link is definitely at that small four position and filling Brandon Ingram there will give them an offensive spark that they didn't have in this NBA playoffs, especially in the Boston series. Pascal Siakam has been very disappointing and while he has a lot of room to grow, he definitely does not have that ability to, you know, create his own shot right away and that's where Brandon Ingram will be perfect at. Ingram is young, has a lot to prove, is very driven and that's why I believe playing in a winning organization of the Toronto Raptors would definitely elevate his career because I don't think the Pelicans are championship contenders yet. But yeah, Brandon Ingram to the Raptors would be amazing if they aren't able to get Fred Van Vliet. Offering Ingram a pretty good contract, Ingram might actually take it. Another player the Raptors could actually target is bringing back DeMar DeRozan to the team because this year DeMar DeRozan will be a free agent. DeMar has said to himself that he will not be re-signing with the San Antonio Spurs and he can go wherever he wants this upcoming offseason and I believe the Raptors could be a potential team he goes to. 
We all know about the fans. The fans love DeRozan and him being traded off, of course, is a sad part. And it's probably the only reason why I don't think DeRozan would sign back here is because, you know, we kind of traded him away. So why would we go to a team that didn't want him in the first place? But still, bringing back DeRozan, teaming him up with Kyle Lowry, Norman Powell, a star of Pascal Siakam, throughout this action might be a better team. It would be super cool to see DeMar DeRozan in a Raptors jersey again, and that would definitely be the story of the offseason if it actually does happen. But if I were to talk about a scenario where I would put in the category as a best case scenario, I believe the Raptors going for Giannis Antetokounmpo in this upcoming offseason would be the best thing. Giannis has been linked to the Toronto Raptors on multiple occasions. He has a strong relationship with Masai Jiri, their general manager, and a trade could be possible if the Raptors want full in. Let's say this scenario happens. Giannis requests a trade from the Bucks, which is unlikely, but let's say he does, and the Raptors offer maybe Kyle Lowry, OG Ananobi, and a couple of first round draft picks. Should the Milwaukee Bucks accept that deal? It's possible, but definitely unlikely. But just imagine a lineup, if the Raptors can re-sign Fred Van Vliet, get Giannis and Pascal Siakam, that would be a big three for the future. But one thing's for sure guys, for me personally, I don't want the Raptors to trade Kyle Lowry. I believe Lowry will be a Raptor Hall of Famer, and he is definitely the heart of the team, so trading Lowry this upcoming offseason is a no-no, because I still believe he'll re-sign with the Raptors next offseason when he becomes unrestricted. But yeah guys, this wraps up my video today on the best case scenarios for the Toronto Raptors and potentially what their offseason plans could be. Just to summarize, get back Fred Van Vliet, get back Serge Ibaka, and they'll definitely be a top 3 seed in the Eastern Conference next year again. But yeah guys, other than that, take it easy, God bless, and I'll see you all next time on my next video on Easy Buckets. Woo! I got angels flying on.